We start an intro. I gotta get this on video. Cody, I didn't know you were a big soda guy. Oh my gosh, there's some fat heads in there. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to improvise. Yeah. <laughs> what is going on guys? Today we are back with another video. It is me, we got Cody, we got Mitch, we got the dream team out here. And we are in a different location which none of us have ever fished until yeah. yesterday. And we uh, kind of were gonna film yesterday, and we filmed a little bit yesterday, but uh, not a lot, but our first time here ever. We are on the Wisconsin River down here in central Wisconsin. Kind of a popular area for a walleye run. Season's open this time of year. You can come fish them, which is great. And uh, today we're gonna go into, we're kind of gonna show you guys what we're doing to catch these fish on the Wisconsin River. Now I can tell you this, these spring walleye runs are all about timing. They're all about water temperature, and water level, um, to see the best fishing. Now, depending on what system you're in, most time you're talking about a bring spring walleye run, there's fish in the lake all winter, Cody. And then... All winter, they just suck right up. <laughs> yep. That little warm water hits them right in the nose. And they start going up river. <laughs> yeah. Those little males just start shooting up first, and then you'll see the big females. And, and right now, as far as we could tell, this is only our second day here, we're in the stage where it seems like a lot of the males are up, and we're still waiting on most of what I'm assuming are the bigger fish coming up. And that's kind of the stage we're in. So we're gonna kind of go into this, uh, um, yeah, we're just gonna kind of show you guys what we're doing down here in the Wisconsin River. And we could be in Green Bay right now pounding 10 pounders, I wanna say that, um, which is might be what we do tonight. But um, I like mixing up content for you guys. I was hoping to get a couple videos, but I just think it'll be better if we just do one really good one today down here. And that's kind of the goal. So today we're gonna go all into these Wisconsin River Wall. I show how you're catching them, what we're catching them on, things like that. But before we get too into this, this intro is getting pretty drug out, Mitchell, but I wanna say huge thank you to everybody who downloaded Walleye Now and the unbelievable support on that. If you were a user, we saw a super high spike in volume um, on the first couple days, and we still are. Um, so if you're having a difficulty loading videos, all these bugs, it's today is Monday. So today's the day a lot of this should be starting to get taken care of. And it's just, uh, you know, the overwhelming support from you guys for downloading that and going on the premium side of it. Great amount of thanks is, is due to you guys. And the, other, the only other issue we really had was Canadian Android users seem to have not been able to find it. That'll also be fixed ASAP. So we're working on those, working on the, working on those couple of glitches as we speak. But huge thank you. I truly believe this is the, a groundbreaking new walleye fishing tool. And if you guys missed that video... We released an app called Walleye Now, which I truly believe is a game-changing walleye fishing app. And uh, we're constantly uploading content to that. So stay tuned. Without further ado, it's me, Cody. We got Mitch. We're going to tackle these Wisconsin River walleye. Show you guys how to catch a whole bunch of these fish um, in the early springtime period. All right, guys. Well, we have arrived. Spot number one here of the day. And uh, basically what we're fishing here is uh, a lot of this river, and each river is different. That's kind of the, the thing, you know, that makes a lot of these lakes and rivers different from one another is a lot of times your, your lake systems, yes, they all have points. Yes, they all have dunk, uh, humps. The, the depths, we got a wrestling match going on here already. Your depths might change, but on a river system, it seems like each river can be a little bit different. And this river in particular, a lot of shallow water. Like most of the river content you guys have seen us do is a lot on like the Wisconsin River or the Mississippi River. And uh, that system, you have a lot more depth, I would say, throughout a lot of the, the areas in the river which I fish. And in this river, it seems like what we have is a lot of this depth of like three, five, six feet, you know, depths in that depth zone. And so as walleyes will move through those areas, a lot of times what we're looking for is areas that are a little bit deeper. What we have here is, you know, as these males kind of run up the river, what you see happen a lot is, you know, there might be a stretch of water where it's all three feet deep for, you know, let's say half a mile. And then you might have a stretch where it's all seven, eight, nine, ten. And a lot of times those fish will hold in those deeper areas and really fly through those shallow areas a lot faster. So we're sitting out here in one of these little bit deeper areas right now. And we're going to get to work this morning. Hopefully, uh, catching a bunch of these Wisconsin River walleyes here in a second. What do you have on Cody? V -rod. Cody's V-rodding right off the bat. Mitch is going the Mitch is going jigging a minnow and I'm gonna go I'm gonna go jig and the uh, the classic spring bait right here. The uh, Arkansas shad tickle shad color right there so stay tuned. As you can see there's just already some guys coming in here as the as the rain has kind of stopped today and uh, we hope to be catching some fish here in a second. Oh, 
Oh. Fish number one of the day right there on a bomb cast. I like it, I like it. That was probably my third cast right there on the old tickle shad and I just made a riflingly long cast. And if, if, no, I'm just gonna grab this one. It feels like just your classic spring river walleye here, Mitchell, which it is. Not a big one, but this is, you know, you can actually, believe it or not, you can keep fish down here this time of year, which seems kind of funny, but you know, this is, <laughs> this is the fish that everybody's, you know, in search of to fill the frying pan with. And there we go, there's number one. And we kind of got a multiple pronged approach going on right now. You know, there's just your classic 15 and a half incher right there on the quarter ounce Google Eye jig and a tickle shad. Oh, I thought Cody had one for a second. <laughs> But, uh, you know, Co Mitch is going straight back with the most f finessiest presentation. And we'll go into a little bit fishing a jig in a current and how you fish super finesse. Mitch is going straight back. Cody's kind of pitching that V-Rod around a little bit, and I'm more so going side to side, um, just kind of hunting with a lighter jig. And that was fish number one right there. And whenever you catch a fish in a river system, especially in these spring run scenarios, a lot of times there'll be multiple fish running up with it. So kind of keep making that same cast over and over. Mitch is on. Mitch is on. Do I look at I have a fish. Do I dare do I dare please not So the reason this is such a big deal that Mitch has a fish on is because we fished all yesterday and caught a bunch of fish and Mitch is the only one who did not catch a fish. Cody you just unspotlocked me. Yeah. You got way too big of boots for that back corner. Yeah. He's just babying him though. I'm just baby and that's small too, it's really small, but you know. Is it really? Look at this smile. Fourth and one. <laughs> on the goal line right now. It's fourth quarter. Oh, look at that. We need oh. this, boys. We need this. <laughs> oh, uh, warms my heart to see Mitchell catch one. <laughs> Definitely going to do the same thing you did to me yesterday. Oh, oh. All right. Fish, fish number two is on the board. Gosh, is that the smallest one I think we've caught the whole time, though? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't believe it. It's been done. On the jig in the middle, Mitchell. Life uh, right there, man. Is, is the weight just off your shoulders right now? So much weight off my shoulders. Yesterday I fumbled the ball a couple times. Coach put me back in the game today, fourth and one. Punch it in. That one popped it good. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Look at that, Cody, nice 16 incher. I like it, I like it, show him off. Classic thump hook set. Bait completely disappeared. Not a big fish, but that one came on that tickle shad. Awesome bait. I feel like I felt your whole body jolt. Oh my gosh, oh, boat, <laughs> felt good. It's been like, 10 hours since I felt that. <laughs> it's just me. Yeah, I just picked up on it and he was there. Right off the bottom, huh? Decent one or same? Same, a little bit better than that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Nice little 16 incher. Show him off, Cody. And uh, we just kinda, you know, as we're fishing this little deeper section, basically all we did was, uh, we were about to move spots and I was like, let's just drift it out. Instead of just totally move first, because there's likely a bunch more fish here, you know. And right on the bottom yeah. of the channel. The classic cold water walleye pickup right there. We'll take them. And I don't think there's like a ton of fish here, but uh, if we can just kind of keep siphoning through them, I think we'll probably do our right. Right there. Might be a catfish. That is a walleye. There we go. Don't worry about it, Cody. Don't worry about it. Just another nice, chunky walleye right there on the uh, swim bait. And as we're drifting, it seems like all of a sudden we're picking up a few more fish. And you can kind of tell we weren't, there isn't like a ton of fish in one spot right here. There we go. Just another nice, chunky, you know, 15 and a half, 16 incher right there. Perfect little spring walleye right there. 
and just pitching around, you know, as obviously if you're spot locked, what ends up happening is you got to either fish a heavier jig or just kind of swing your cast with a light jig. And as we're kind of drifting with the current, you can almost, you know, because your boat's obviously moving the same speed as the current, you can just keep working the bait almost like you're in a lake. All right, well, we're going make, back up to make another drift through here. Seems like there's some fish around. And uh, yesterday we kind of found a few spots that seem to be holding fish. And a lot of times you can kind of look at these river systems and, you know, a lot of these, just to kind of break it down, a lot of these long straight set sections, something that looks something like this here, you know, it can be relatively unchanging or fish kind of scattered throughout it. A lot of times, you know, just what we did was basically look at the map and wherever it kind of makes a big zig and a zag in it, a lot of times, you know, that's just one of those natural, you know, physical structures where you're going to find fish or the river is going to be different there. And a lot of times, you know, whenever you have obviously any kind of point that comes out, there's a current break and then it cuts back the other way and you got a couple current breaks there. So <clears throat> just kind of breaking down a river for the first time. A lot of times any kind of big neck down, any kind of big zigzag in and out, a lot of times these are the kind of spots you can find fish and a lot of times you'll find obviously deeper water on some of those corners. So um, it seems like when we drifted through it, you know, you can tell fish aren't like just loaded up in one spot. This bottom is mostly sand, a little bit of gravel and these fish are just kind of in here, but a little bit more towards the top end. And a lot, a lot of times what you see in these holes, that top end of the hole where the current's coming down into it, seems to a lot of times be where most of the fish are. Right there, fish on, boys. Yeah, he's a nice one. He's a nice one. I mean, you know, he's just this kind of same class of fish, but we'll take him like that. I'm going to spot lock down quick. Look at that, right off in the net on the old uh, tickle shad right there, Arkansas shad, quarter ounce blue eyed jig. I don't know if there's a better spring walleye presentation. That just pretty much will work everywhere you're going to go. Oh, he's all squirrely. He's all squirrely. There we go. Look at that guy. Beautiful. He's all cold water S curving up. <laughs> Isn't that kind of funny looking? Beautiful spring walleye right there. He wants, looks like he wants to go back though. That's as good as it gets. Just catching a whole bunch of these Wisconsin River. Nice kind of early run walleyes. hooked up I think we're on some fish Cody That's spot number two fishing a little bit more current here so we're just going straight backwards it's a nice I'm just gonna keep him skiing keep him skiing it's back down <laughs> oh man fighting him in the current so much fun and on my first cast here I lost one and there we go there's another you know decent little one on the Arkansas Shad, and I was fishing a quarter on the last spot. A little more current, got to go up to a three ace here. And we've only made a few casts and already a couple couple little fishes going on. There we go, not big, but fun. And anytime you're in a new body of water catching fish, it's always a good lesson and fun to do. Guy. Another fish on right there. He's on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just barely, barely touching bottom back there. In that? Oh, there's a lot of current here. He might not even be that big, you know. He's not on top yet, so that's normally a good sign. We'll take him out. There he comes up. Oh, ski him in in the current. <laughs> it's a nice fish, though, huh? Mm -hmm. Look how he ate that jig. Just gone, dude. Out of sight. On the old, uh, the old tickle, tickle shad right there, where they're eating good like that. That is what we're after. You can tell they're cold. Their mouths are just pinned shut. There we go. Another nice walleye in the river. Mitch has one too. Nice, Mitchell. Nice. Is it better? It's kind of doing no oh, same size. Nice fish though. Nice fish. Nice. Well, we're on them, and a lot of times these rivers, it's just move around, move around, move around to get in a little area where there's a bunch of fish. Mm -hmm. Definitely a bunch of fish here, isn't there? I'd say so. We have not been here for very long at all. Let me see that little bugger. Mitchell's got the jig in the middle going on. Sure Nothing do. crazy big, but heavy jig. getting it done. Mitchell actually I went all the way up to a three quarter just so we could fish a little bit faster. 
All right, guys, so kind of one thing that's always super important whenever you're fishing a river system, especially with like a jig and a minnow or something like soft plastics, is to have a bunch of different weighted jigs. And today I have personally caught fish now on anything from a quarter ounce to a three eighths ounce, and then all the way up to even a three quarter ounce. And it's all dependent on how much current you're fishing in. And that's exactly what we're you know, gonna talk about here. It's super important to weight that jig to the amount of current you're fishing. Now, obviously, if, you know, let's say the current's coming in head on here. If you're pitching sideways, and walking that jig back you can get by with a lot lighter weighted jig because you just kind of fish it to you know it gets to like kind of swings right to the back of the boat all you're doing is this kind of less reeling and just popping that thing letting it hit popping it letting it hit popping it letting it hit so if i'm going to cast a lot of times that's what i'll do now kind of the most common way we'll fish most of the time is drag it straight back into the current so if we're fishing a heavy current spot like we are right now bite cody We'll cast that thing straight back and we're gonna just pull it back to the boat super slow. And when that thing hits bottom, like we are right now, just pulling it up, letting it hit bottom again. Just letting that current keep that little swim bait, just paddling in the current until it hits back to bottom and then popping it back up like that. And that's most of the time when you need to go to the heaviest jig. And then, you know, you're pulling it back to the boat slowly like this, letting it hang up in the current, letting it hit bottom again, reel down the slack. And most of the time when you're fishing this way, you need the heaviest jig and most of the time what'll happen is you'll pop that bait up dunk, and you'll feel get popped as it's just kind of hanging there getting wispy in the current so that's kind of when you want the heaviest jig but it's super important that we don't want to be doing is fishing so light where either a you're not touching bottom when you're trying to pull it back to the boat or b you're fishing so heavy that when you pull that thing forward it just goes dunk, and just keeps you could feel it hit bottom super hard you know every time within half a second or a second of when you pop that jig up especially when the water's cold like this you want to weight that jig to the current so that when you pop that bait up you could just imagine that whatever weight jig you're using when it's perfectly dialed it just kind of hangs there and that swim bait's just kind of going like this in the current and slowly comes back down and hits bottom and then you pop it up again so definitely when the water's really cold pay super close attention to that weight jig you're using get it to get up there in the current and get real wispy and you guys will be catching a whole bunch more of these springtime walleyes on these river systems How's it feel, Cody? Decent? You just spot it too? No. No. Well, I just told Cody, I was like, there's a bunch of fish. He looks decent, huh? He's a nice one. Oh, yeah. Really hooked, Scoop him up, Mitchell. Mitchell, you want to Scoop get me him out? Scoop him up. Give me the net. On the old V-Rod. He's just barely hooked. Normally, we probably wouldn't not net this fish, but just for Cody, we'll do it. Oh, just for me. Just, we'll just spot lock down real quick. What a killer bait that little thing is in river systems, huh? There we go. Pretty impressive, huh? Nice. Chunky, little male. 16 incher. We'll take them. We'll take them all like that. Heavy. It's feeling. It? It's feeling goofy. It? It's feeling all Mitchell, sorts of goofy. You got him on the net. Nice walleye here, Mitchell. Oh, yeah. Nice walleye. Yeah, hurry up, Mitchell. Mitchell, Mitchell, hurry up. Mitchell. You're on the wrong side, Mitchell. You're on the wrong side. Hurry, hurry, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there we go. Nice walleye in the bag right there. On the old jig and plastic. And it's been a fun little morning. We've only been at it for probably a few hours now. Are we hugging each other already? Holy He's cow. To. It's a little too much for me, Mitchell, to be honest with you. But it's been a fun little morning catching a bunch of these river walleyes. And it just feels right when you're in a lot of these smaller rivers doing the whole spring walleye thing. Well, he's all doing cold water curling on me. There we go. Beautiful fish right there. Take them all day long like that. All right, there he is going back to where he came. There you go. See you later, buddy. All right, talk about baits real quick here. Pretty simple kind of standard river fishing stuff this morning. Obviously, you know, probably our top producers been the swim bait, quarter ounce or three eighths ounce, or even three quarter ounce, depending on how much current we're in. Um, Kalen's Google Eye jig, and then just the classic, the one that's becoming one of my favorite swim baits so far, especially for cold water, because how supple they are. The Kalen's Tickle Shad. I'll go ahead and link that down below. We're actually fishing the 2.8. 
There's a couple different sizes. One's a 2.8, and this one's just been demolished in the last couple days. There's a 3.8, but I really like the 2.8 when the water's really cold because you hardly have to move it. The smaller and fin finessier these swim baits are, the less movement it takes to move them. So for fishing for a lot of these cold water, you know, eater sized male walleyes, just you can barely crawl this thing and get it moving a lot. Generally, the smaller that bait is, the if more finesse you can fish it to get it to do the same thing. And then the other bait we've been catching fish on, mainly Cody, and I think Mitch has caught one so far this morning on it, has been the Acme V-Rod in that 3 8 ounce. And color hasn't seemed to matter too much. Cody's fishing just my favorite river color, which is that red craw, and uh, but a few different colors have caught fish since we've been down here. So the V-Rod, that blade bait, always a class to color bait. And you can either pitch it, pretty much pitching it side to side, and just kind of walking it back in the current or just fishing it vertical as we're drifting has been productive. And Mitchell has caught a few fish just on the tried and true spring. Oh, minnow just tore off right there. Spring jig in a minnow. And just the key with doing that is obviously getting your weight right. So we you know whether you're fishing vertical or casting back and pulling it back to the boat, ranging it anywhere from that quarter ounce to a three eighth and all the way up to a three quarter, depending on the current. So pretty standard river fishing, but those are definitely the three baits we've seen the most fish on. And live bait has not seemed to matter too much. Um, as long as you're fishing something you're real finesse, either a swim bait or that blade bait and just getting it to go just for that quick little reaction bite in cold water we've seen be so productive over the years in these river systems. Are you in Mitchell? Yeah. Alright guys, well that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it. Quick little pit stop on the Wisconsin River here. Wanted to film something we've never done before. None of us had ever been here. Kind of a cool little fishery. I think we're definitely early. The water's low. The water's pretty cold still and it's mostly males up here. Now I'm sure if you did maybe a different thing or if you knew it was like some little sweet sots you could probably find some more fish or if you just parked your parked your boat at the dam all day long which we did not do um my guess is you probably run into a few bigger fish but what are you guys closing thoughts on the wisconsin river it's nice to get out something different none of us have ever looked at yeah you know that's yeah. that's a huge thing there you know yeah, definitely makes me more intrigued with uh, river systems. Yeah, river fishing, they're yeah. just totally different beasts. If you're used to fishing lakes all the time, I love challenging myself to come to the rivers. Natural lakes, kind of, I feel like are my bread and butter. I come to rivers and I feel out of place and I always learn something when I leave a river. But hopefully you guys kind of enjoyed watching this video. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the Walleye Now app. We're super excited about it and look forward for a lot more of that content. Stay tuned for later this week. If you guys are, I'll be doing a, an in, in the St. Cloud Shield store location. I'll be doing an awesome seminar there. They're already sold out on tickets, but they saved the day and they're putting it online. So I'll, I'll link that down below, right on the Shields Outdoors Facebook page. That'll be going live on Thursday night and Friday night of this week. And uh, I'll be talking walleye now. I'll be talking walleye seasonal progressions for the whole season and all that kind of hardcore information you guys want. And that's just the first event. We'll do, I think, like seven more of these big seminars through Shields over the course of the next couple months here. And hopefully you guys are getting in those stores checking out the end cap because we're pretty proud and excited about yeah. getting an end cap in shields awesome company to partner with but also for now quick update too for the uh, android canada users you guys are good to go i don't know if you guys can hear this android canada users mitchell was in contact with it this morning and they say it is good to go so i appreciate your guys patience in canada your android users there and uh yeah thanks for all the support when we release this app but for now i appreciate you guys watch this video stay tuned for more content we'll see ya subscribe make sure to subscribe make sure to subscribe i'll do it again Oh, I can't reach it. But for now, how do I say it? And then you guys mess me up and I gotta restart. Uh, you do but what you gotta do, man. Stay tuned, tuned for more. Away. Appreciate you guys watching this. <laughs> if you guys are not yet, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. We'll see you next time.